Hello my dragon friends, I'm Carla Morrow of Dragon Lady Art Studios. I'm a dragon channeler and painter of dragon energies. So currently I'm working on an oracle guide deck that's centered around dragons that's set to be published in 2021, and I wanted to share the dragons that have come to me along with the process of painting them. Today I'm working on a water dragon. Now there are several dragons within the family of water dragons, and this is just the one that happens to be coming forward right now. So. From the stillness of the pond in spring to the machinations of the ocean, flow, ease, and letting go are the characteristics that tend to make up water dragons. They were brought here from the outer reaches of our universe and created to protect the precious element of water. The water elemental dragons are deeply embedded in our psyche. Now, we've seen and experienced these dragons for as long as people have been looking out over large bodies of water, and even today, people still swear to have seen them. Some may not see physical dragons on land, but there's still an understanding that we don't know what could exist in the deepest parts of our lakes and oceans, and how little of that we've explored. And here, there be dragons. Due to their calming nature, water dragons became a soothing balm to the heat and turmoil of the burning surface of the earth, and today they still do that, they just cool the chaotic energy that flows around and through us now. As more feminine in nature, they embody the dualities in constant, of constant movement and rest yet the same time. They remind us to flow and not struggle, to release the hold on our mind, environment, and situations, and just go where they take us for the moment. The stillness of release and the joy of ease. This is what they remind us to do, to remain calm in difficult situations and just, just kind of relax and let go. Now if a water dragon is making itself known to you, it's letting you know that you really need to let go and let things happen as they will. Take time to rest and know that this too shall pass. Everything changes, including where we are at this moment and the obstacles that are in our way. They're asking us to flow around those obstacles and not fight and struggle. This, everything changes, and that time in our life will soon become the past. So this particular water dragon that I'm working on now is the, the embodiment of rest, flow, hibernation, and patience. This one is specifically patience. With a few actions, they can help you find calm in your life and be a reminder that you still need to rest and take care of yourself no matter what situation you happen to be in right now. This one came to me while I was seeking out individual dragons to help with the oracle deck, and they came in groups of four, and this is the last one of the four, which is patience. Each of the water dragon colorings are based on sharks, another animal that's also misunderstood. And this one happens to be a whale shark. So whale sharks are slow moving and graceful and they're pretty calm and along with turtles being so long lived around her, it made a lot of sense to use this imagery for patience. Now, if you would like to call upon water dragons to come and have a presence in your life, you want to set an intent to reach out to those dragons specifically and use whatever tool you like to invoke water as a focal point for that. So the first key point is to Envision dragons in your mind or envision water dragons specifically and hold the question in your heart as to what you want to ask it. If you want it to ask it to help you flow around obstacles or with letting go that's something that's keeping you from moving forward and that's blocking you. A lot of times uh, imagery that helps you invoke the sea and the ocean is great for focal points. So sea green candles, blue candles, you can use beach, sa beach sand, shells, or a bowl of salt water. Uh, crystals and stones that invoke watery type presence. Um, if you use scents in your manifestations, you can try the fresh scents such as eucalyptus, jasmine, lemon, myrrh, sandalwood, or spearmint. Those are some really good examples. Anything that, that harkens back to that water, and as long as you're holding the form of the dragon in your head, you should be able to reach out and contact them you know, pretty easily. Uh, you'll want to ask them for messages and assistance with letting go, letting, f learning to flow around obstacles, relaxation, Anything that has to do with, with that kind of energy of just releasing and relaxing. Um, which I know is really, really hard right now because we live in a very, like, especially um, first world countries. Everything's very stressful and very hard. And dragons are something, water dragons specifically, is something that we really, really need to reach out for more and invoke more in our daily life. So we're not so stressed out, you know, anxiety ridden and end up being depressed in the long run. They can all help with that. So this particular piece is done in watercolor, which all of the oracle deck cards are. I always start with the background and then work forward, and the dragon is actually the last thing that I finish. Uh, the background for this one I finished previously, and I just wanted to record the dragon, so... I painted the shadows of the dragon in Payne's Gray, and then darkened spots uh, layer by layer. And I start with like a light layer, and then a medium layer, and then go darker and darker until I get the tone that I really, really like. Once all the local colors are in on the dragon, 
I then add some indigo blue to darken the shadows and that also ties the foreground into the background. So it helps unify the piece so that it looks like all the elements in this piece exist in the same space. Like they kind of come from all the same area. Um, after my layers are in and I get finished with that, I'll go back with a white gouache and add in my whites. And this, this helps me lead the eye around the painting and brings my whites back. A lot of times I use watercolor pretty, pretty heavily and I lose a lot of those whites of the paper. So the gouache lets me bring that back. And gouache is basically um, an opaque watercolor. So watercolor is usually translucent and allows the light layers to shine through and bounce off the surface of the paper. That's how it kind of works, where gouache is opaque and stops the light. So it, it's a really good for highlights and uh, bringing people's eyes to certain areas of the canvas that you want and for those bright, bright whites. So for the final touch, I added a wash of pink, a little bit of blue and yellow to the pearl and then topped it off with more dots of the white gouache, uh, which I'm quite fond of. So thank you for watching. I'm going to let you watch out the rest of this video. And if you'd like to see more of the process of each card as I'm working on them or learn about the energies of dragons and working with them, you can visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash dragonladyart. And for dragon energy for your home and to see my other dragon work, please visit dragonladyart.com. Thank you guys so much and enjoy the rest of the video. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.